Hello everyone, this is the Soul Surrender Show. I'm your host, Skyler Scott. I'm excited to chat with you today. This podcast is published in video format on both YouTube and Facebook. It can also be listened to through Spotify and the other places that you listen to podcasts. Additionally, you can follow the Soul Surrender Show on Instagram and TikTok for short video clips and additional content. I appreciate all of you supporting the show. As many of you probably know, I'm the father of seven children. Uh, I have them with me this week. When I go to bed at night, I, I, I've never had a hard time falling asleep. However, if I sleep even for like an hour, if I'm woken up, going back to sleep sometimes is almost impossible. It's like my brain has decided, hey, you slept, you're good to go. Um, why don't you get up and build something or do something? And uh, the last two nights in a row, when you have, I have quintuplets included in the mix, so I have five five-year-olds. When you have five five-year-olds, the odds of you being woken up in the middle of the night is higher. Uh, it's five times higher than just having one five-year-old. And so the last two nights I've been lucky because two nights in a row, I've been woken up by a different child and uh, I'd been asleep for a couple hours and then I usually start my day at three in the morning because uh, yeah, I'm just not going back to bed. So anyway, thank you for letting me rant a little bit. Let, let that off my chest. I really love being a dad. I've wanted to be a dad from a very young age. It's something that I've always always wanted. In fact, I, I even wanted a, a, a big family. I wanted a lot of kids. That worked out. I have an 18 year old, I have a 13 year old, and then I have the, the quintuplic five year old. So one, two, seven, that's not typical math, but that's how my family was built. Before I became a father, I remember thinking that I was going to have kids and that I would, I would fill them up with goodness. They would come to me like empty cups and I would fill them with goodness and, and all the things that they needed to know. I would teach them all the things they needed to know so that they could have happy lives and, and enjoy, enjoy their time here in this human experience. However, from the moment my first child was born, my, my son Shaden, I remember holding him and just having this overwhelming feeling of love and, and realizing pretty quick, pretty early on, that my job was not to make Shaden good that children come to us and they're not empty cups that we fill up with goodness, they're already full. They're already loving, divine people. And Frank said, in spite of everything, I still believe that people are really good at heart. And that is something that I, I believe. I believe that we are innately good and children are innately good. They're innately divine. Even if they do wake you up at all hours of the night for, for no reason. The other day, one of my five-year-olds came in at four in the morning to ask me if the zombies were real. Uh, the zombie is how he says zombies. And I told him that they weren't real and that he should go back to bed. He promptly went back to bed. I did not. So in addition to children being innately good, good at heart, they are also very impressionable. Their, their, their minds are like sponges and they're also very trusting. What we teach children during the crucial brain developing years tends to stick with them for a very long time and can be very difficult to erase. And these are questions that I sit with. How do I best guide and teach my children? And what are the most important values that I can instill in them? These are questions that I think every conscious parent sits with. And I wonder in a world that is seemingly so complicated, if the answer to these questions are complicated or if in fact, they're quite simple. St. Augustine taught love and do what you will. He kept it that simple. If we love first and we have love in our hearts, then anything else we do will be in harmony with the divine plan. As I think about my kids more than anything else, I want them to know that they're loved and that love is really who they are. I was raised by loving parents who taught me that God loved me. God was a father figure who wanted me to be happy and wanted me to live with him forever. This life was a test. It was a chance to prove that I would follow God, I would follow God's plan, and that I would live worthy to have the honor to return home, to live with God after I die. If I was obedient, I could return to his presence. This was the type of love I understood. My father in heaven loved me, he wanted me back, and he would welcome me back, but only under certain conditions. I needed to be free of sin. Sin was something that made me unworthy, unclean, and unfit to live with God. These teachings are commonly embraced by Christian sects throughout the world. And while every Christian doesn't look at these teachings the exact same way, the idea that we must repent of our sins, become clean, and obey God to be saved from hell is commonly believed. These teachings were at the very center of my reality for a very long time. I was on earth to be tested, and God was standing by to reward me for my obedience or to punish me for not measuring up. Consequently, my understanding of love 
was intertwined with fear, mainly because my ability to experience a fullness of love was based on certain conditions. When I was 40, I found my way out of a high control, high demand religion. And when I did, the first thing that I realized was love was much bigger than I'd ever perceived it was. It was much bigger than I'd been taught that it was. I always felt that everyone deserved to be loved, except perhaps for me, at least not quite yet. I always felt like I needed to climb another mountain or find a way to prove my devotion and worthiness to God so that God would let me live with him again. At the age of 40, I allowed myself for the first time to fully love myself and connected with the divine in a way that I'd never imagined. I was able to accept love with no strings attached, with no expectations, with no callings or missions for me to fulfill. I was just loved. When I accepted that kind of love in my heart, even self-love, that's when I found divinity. As I podcast, if I talk about God, the universe, a higher self, a divine power, or simply just love, all of those things to me are synonymous. And regardless of how you look at the world and contemplate the universe and connect with yourself or connect with divinity, I think at the end of the day, we're all having this similar experience and we're all trying to arrive at the same place, love and peace. After having a major faith shift in my life and a shift in the way that I perceive the world and the way that, that I connect with the divine, it has been interesting to go back and to look at the things that my parents lovingly taught me and to look at them from perhaps a different perspective. I was taught that sin would keep me from God. The Greek word for sin is harmatia, which simply means to miss the mark or to miss the point, perhaps to not understand. The Greek word for repentance is metanoia, which means to turn or simply a change of mind. What if our understanding of sin wasn't really what we thought it was? What if it meant to just miss the mark, to miss the point? or to miss the principle being taught? And what if repentance was simply to turn, to turn to God or to, to turn back within ourselves, to turn to our higher self? And again, another meaning is simply a change of mind, to change the way we look at things and to let go of things that are actually not in harmony with love. Well, that would certainly change our perspective of a God or a higher power who was standing by to judge us, to either bless us or to punish us. The other day I heard a psychologist talking about teaching children and disciplining children. And he said that the word discipline, to discipline someone, actually means to teach them. In our minds, we generally associate all discipline with punishment. However, he said if we won't look at it as punishment and actually look at the first opportunity to simply teach, to give the child more information and help them to understand why we, we, we do or don't do certain things, how we can show respect to others. In that moment, we'll be much more effective as parents if we can discipline them, if we can teach them. I think in our minds and, and something that happens to humanity, in some ways, I think we create God as a parent who's more like us, who's a little more egotistical and is like, okay, if you do this, this is what I'm gonna do because it's really important that, that I punish you. I think Jesus was trying to get people to understand that infinite love, divine love, God's love is so much higher than, than our own and our own perceptions. When, when he told the people, look, if you have a child that comes up to you and the child says, I'm hungry and ask for bread, would you give him a stone? Or if a child came up and said, I, I, can I please have a fish? Would you give the child a serpent? He was teaching people that, you know, in our own flawed human existence, we still have a great love for our kids. And if our kids make mistakes, we don't kick them out of the house. We don't say, I'm gonna live here forever and you're going to live there forever. Jesus was teaching us that divine love is far greater than our human understanding. For 40 years, I missed the mark. I didn't understand, I missed the point. I didn't understand that I was already connected to the divine. I thought that I had to do something or prove something outside of myself in order to be worthy to have that love in my life. The main shift that happened in my life was a form of repentance, a change of mind, a turning back to God and a turning back to myself and a willingness to feel love for me and to embrace the love and the divinity that was already inside of me and had always been there. Recently, I've been learning a little bit about the book of Thomas, which I find is really interesting because the book of Thomas wasn't included in, in the King James version of the Bible and isn't in most Bibles. The book of Thomas was contemporary with the other books uh, of the other apostles that was included, but, but it wasn't put in the book. 
Thomas, when he describes Jesus, there's a lot of teachings that he describes much differently. And one of them is he taught that the kingdom of heaven, he said, Jesus, Jesus didn't say the kingdom of heaven was among you. According to Thomas, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven is within you. Again, which is a notion to look within to find wholeness, to find completeness, and even to find Jesus. In many ways, I feel I was taught to find divine love in all of the wrong places. I was trying to find it outside of myself. I was trying to earn it. I'm gonna share a few lyrics from one of my favorite songs, um, which I mentioned in my previous podcast, Stupid Deep by John Bellion. Uh, the lyrics to the first verse, what if who I hoped to be was always me? And the love I thought to feel was always free. What if all the things I've done were just attempts of earning love? Because the hole inside my heart is stupid deep. I love that song. There's also an acoustic version of the song that I like even more. It's really good. Check it out. But back to the lyrics. What if, what if who we wanted to be was really always ourselves? and we were trying to become someone else. Um, and the love that we fought to fill was actually free. We didn't have to fight for it. It was just there. Uh, what if all the things we've done were just attempts of earning love? I can so see that in my life. All of the things that I did, because there was a lot of works, there was a lot of doing, there was a lot of serving, there was a lot of church service, all of those things. And they, all, they were all good and beautiful and they helped me connect with love. But yet one thing always stood in my way. The idea that doing all these things help me somehow become more worthy of God's love and help me to earn it in some way. Divine love is for everyone and it is something we find within. And while it's something that we can experience throughout our lives, it's something that we can actually never fully comprehend or understand while having this human experience. I'm gonna share a little story with you. A man once approached his spiritual teacher telling him that he understood love. God is love, he said. I understand it now, I can comprehend it. The teacher quietly said, yes, but there is more. Love yourself. The man walked away thinking about what he'd been told and weeks later he came back and told the teacher, I love myself, I understand love now, I can comprehend it. And the teacher said, yes, but there's more, love your neighbor. So the man left for a period and came back and reported happily that he now got it, he now understood it because he truly loved his neighbor. The teacher again said, yes, but there is more, go and love your enemies. The man left for a long period of time, but eventually did come back to his teacher. Master, I love my enemy. And then he added, now perceiving that love has no bounds, but master, there is so much more. Love is something that we experience in life, something that dwells in the heart, but it's not something we can ever fully understand or comprehend, not with the mind. How could the finite fully comprehend the infinite and the eternal? It seems the more love that we experience, the more we understand that it's bigger than anything we could ever imagine. So what do I teach my kids? To my children, God is love and so are you. So trust yourself, love, and do what you will. This is the Soul Surrender Show. I'm Skylar Scott. Thank you for listening.